This video gives a brief overview of the Cinemotion camera library. Before we get into it, let's take a look at handheld camera motion and some different approaches to achieving it in 3D. If you've attempted to create this kind of motion manually, you'll know it can be time consuming to set up and dial in, and often not very realistic, especially when it's anything more than a subtle bit of rotation. The most basic method is achieved by simply setting some random keyframes on a camera's rotation parameters. Whilst this gives you the most direct control over every motion, it quickly becomes unworkable and inflexible without a lot of adjusting and also quite unrealistic. By far the most common way to achieve handheld camera motion is to use noise. By connecting noise to certain parameters of a camera like rotation and translation, you can sometimes get acceptable results for subtle motion. The problem is that noise functions aren't really modelled to describe the weight and behaviour of operating a real camera, and as it's not a simulation, nor do they account for things like inertia for example. On the plus side, procedural motion can theoretically run forever and you can adjust certain aspects of it if you want to spend the time to do so. There are also a few great apps and plugins you can use which can either be expensive, drop frames or be a bit laborious to set up or even just limited to one piece of software. And honestly for a lot of the shots I wanted to achieve, I found myself using the same setups again and again. So for now I found motion capture to be a simpler, quicker and more realistic method. At one end you can just think of this as a better noise model to add as a layer to your cameras. And at the other end, a quick and easy way of achieving full finished camera animation. Whilst of course there's no substitute for shooting bespoke cameras every time, I thought it'd be handy to have a bunch of these files on the hard drive ready to go. I use this technique so often in my own work that I decided to make Cinemotion. Cinemotion is a library of 120 motion track cameras that allow you to quickly import a number of common pre-recorded shots but also various layers of authentic idle motion, which can be combined with traditional keyframes to balance realism with flexibility. Of course, there's never one technique that works for every scenario, but if you're making regular renders like VFX tests, motion graphics, or even cinematics, having ready to go motion can be a really useful option. Cinemotion is shot on a film style virtual production shoulder rig. The weighted shoulder rig provides a base level of stability against high frequency movement, but still feeling distinctly handheld, the cameras are supplied in FBX, Alembic and Clip files, so we'll work in basically all major DCCs like Max Meyer, C4D, Blender, Houdini and so on. There's a specific version set up for UE4 which will also be available on the Unreal Marketplace, which I'll cover in more detail in a separate video. First, let's open the Cinemotion folder once you've downloaded the files. You'll see the manual, the bonus HDA for Houdini users which we'll take a look at in a moment, the Clips folder which is where the actual cameras live, and also the Preview Gallery. Unless you already know what file you want, you might want to start with the previews. These provide a quick way to see the camera motion without even having to load it into your 3D software. These videos share the same file names as the cameras themselves. Cinemotion cameras are split into two categories, idles and framing moves. Idles contain various ambient or generalized motion, all axis aligned and based around world zero. Rather than doing any blending or looping, I decided to shoot long 30 second takes which will hopefully cover most of the shots you'd want to achieve, and these are just regular cameras so you can easily adjust or blend them if you require. Secondly, framing moves, which contain more specific camera shots to give a dynamic reveal or motion to a scene. These also end in long idles just to give enough coverage, and again following the same global axis alignment around world zero. The reason this is useful is because it allows you to quickly test out variations of shots without them jumping around or changing framing. So let's take a look at how to use them in a couple of DCCs. I'll start in Blender and then we can also jump into Houdini to take a look at the HDA. But the general process should be pretty much the same for all 3D software. Let's import a camera by navigating to the Clips folder. So first I'll choose my category, then shot name, and then the file format. In this case I'm going to choose Alembic. These are the actual camera files. You'll notice there are a few options to choose from. The letter donates a variation, ABC and so forth, and there might be a number of different takes to choose from. And you'll also see the smoothing part of the file name. These are pre-baked smoothing levels for each shot, just for convenience. This allows you to choose between the raw camera motion, level 0, up to heavy smoothing at level 4. You can of course do this manually on the keyframes if you want even more control, but this is designed to be as quick to use as possible. I'll go and select this shot and load it in. You'll notice the camera is moving about the origin of the scene. It'll look a bit odd if you view it here, as it will be intersecting the world grid, and most of the time you'll want to place your camera somewhere appropriate to your scene. Rather than having to edit all the keyframes directly, the quickest and simplest method is just to add a null or parent to the camera. In Blender this is called an empty, so I'll add it to the scene and make it a parent of the camera. Now you can move or rotate it to wherever you need. 
Repeating this in Houdini, I'll load the FBX this time. Make sure you're importing it to the object level. And then like before, add a null and position it into the correct place in the scene. I'll add some rotation to the null to adjust the framing. You can also add keyframes to blend this natural motion layer with something more intentional. So here's an example of adding some tilt to this idle clip. First we add a keyframe to our end position, go back to frame zero, and then add a second keyframe. And now we have that natural camera motion, but with the flexibility of timed keyframes. This means you can spend more time on the main beats rather than managing hundreds of keyframes. For Houdini users, I've included a free Cinemotion Camera HDA. This allows you to use the dot clip format to load the raw motion data and have discrete control over a number of parameters. Once you've installed the HDA, hit tab at the object level and drop down the CT Cinemotion HDA. Under motion file, you can select a camera using the supplied dot clip file formats. And that's it, the motion capture is already wired to the camera which lives inside the HDA. Clip speed allows you to change the speed of the camera. Often I like to slow cameras down to get a more cinematic feel. Sometimes even just a bit of retiming can give some interesting results. You can also do this manually in the Lembic and FBX files in your curve editor, but this is a nice way to experiment in real time as Houdini deals with motion data really well. Unlike pixel data, motion capture can be retimed fairly drastically without any issues, especially the dot .clip files as they're recorded at a very high sample rate. Motion scale sets the world scale of the camera, this should usually be left to 1, but it can be used for reducing the motion influence or for oddly scaled scenes. Then finally the motion smoothing allows you full control over the smoothing filter. Turn up the amount to apply the filter to the raw motion capture. Often I use something like 0.25 or thereabouts, but also experiment turning up high and you get a kind of gimbal or steady cam feel. On the camera settings tab you can rotate the camera's local orientation separate to its translation. This is useful for quickly adjusting the framing without affecting the blocking. The motion route is the standard subnet translation, which you can use to manually adjust the location of the entire motion data. However, there is a simpler way. Similar to the FBX and Alembic examples before, you can add a null to the HDA input, allowing you to translate, rotate, or attach the motion route. Finally, although the HDA has an embedded camera, you may wish to have any type of geometry or camera exposed to the object level. Here I'll drop down a standard camera and attach it to the output of the HDA. The HDA will pass the translation data out so you can attach anything you like. This becomes quite powerful because you can chain Cinemotion nodes together and create hybrid motion with full control over each layer. So for example, you could load in one of the driving idle clips. And on top of that, you can apply a searching motion, for example, and have full control over each layer's influence. So that's just a quick overview of the Cinemotion cameras, and a link to Cinemotion is in the description. Do send me an email on the website if you have any questions.